Hi, I'm Chip Manuel, Food Safety Science Advisor with Gojo Industries. In keeping with the Purell Table Talk series, we're here today bringing together food safety experts to share best practices and the latest insights for the industry. So we have Dr. Leanne Jacobs, William Neal Reynolds, Distinguished Professor from NC State University. Thanks for joining us. Then we have Dr. Hal King, Managing Partner with Active Food Safety. So we're here today to have a conversation about some best practices for uh, controlling some pesky pathogens in restaurants. So let's start with how. Um, this pandemic has been incredibly disruptive to the industry um, and we've seen a lot of heightened hygiene practices. And you work with a lot of clients across the country um, in a lot of different industries. But what hygiene practices do you think will stick and will they have any impact on food safety? We all struggle to get restaurant businesses, mainly the enterprises, but also smaller independents, to actually do some of the things in the FDA food code, like screening employees for you know, diarrhea and vomiting so that they don't work with those types of foodborne illnesses. Um, so it's a big struggle there, kind of get them to do that. Um, we had struggles with companies using the right chemicals. A lot of chemicals that companies were using are cheap and they don't actually kill any of the foodborne pathogens that are in the restaurant, so that didn't make any sense. Um, and then, you know, as it related to actually using the chemicals properly to, to hit where the transmission sites are that lead to cross-contamination, there was no clue, right? But I think in the pandemic, we saw that people started to kind of get a heightened awareness of the need to screen employees for COVID so they could work and keep the restaurant open, but it drove them to also be doing any other kind of disease, fever, diarrhea, vomiting, like all that stuff that kind of, kind of came up. Um, disinfection, we heard everybody going in to find the end list for EPA, did it kill COVID? Well, that made kind of train people to think, well, let's ask if it kills foodborne pathogens like norovirus, right, before we buy chemicals. And then I think the third part of, you know, when people were talking about where they might start to do high touch surface, we heard in the very beginning, we need to be focusing on high touch surfaces. So they were like sit disinfecting everything. <laughs> you walk in a restaurant, they're spraying you down. So, you know, it was really important, but I think what's gonna stick, and I, I see this now, the clients now, as the pandemic starts to kind of hopefully wane, is they're, they're all still doing um, pandemic kind of COVID check, because they have to in some states, but they're doing foodborne illness wellness checks too, right? For their employees, that's sticking. Um, the high touch surfaces has kind of gone away a little bit. A lot of people tell them that they don't need it, but they do, especially when you think about norovirus transmission um, in restaurants. And then the part, the part we're seeing a lot more come kind of to the table of kind of asking, does the chemical actually kill foodborne pathogens? So I'm not sure if that one's gonna stick as, as fast as we want it to, because again, they're all trying to cut costs. Um, but the idea is we need to remind them that they need to kind of keep that high touch disinfection with those type of proper chemicals. So Leanne, you've spent a lot of your career studying norovirus, including many ways to inactivate it. So in reflecting back on your research career, what few takeaways or insights would you like to share with food safety professionals uh, for controlling this pathogen? The most important ones I think to share um, is sort of this recognition that um, norovirus um, is definitely here to stay. We don't have a vaccine um, and um, there are vaccines in development, but um, who knows when or, or if they'll be released. Um, and, and so consequently, this is, even, even as we see COVID wane, we're gonna see Noro um, stay with us and in point of fact, probably peak a little bit more because um, some of the COVID controls have been relaxed. Um, I guess I would say um, a couple things. The first is to recognize that norovirus is largely a community acquired infection. Um, about 75% of cases happen in the community. So if you have community transmission um, um, in your area, you are invariably gonna be exposed to norovirus. Um, the second thing is, is that it is an incredibly difficult bug to inactivate, both with hand sanitizers, with surface, with, uh, surface disinfectants and sanitizers, um, even with many food processes and preservation methods. So your best control really is prevention, um, rather than trying to rely on, on um, incomplete inactivation strategies. And, um, uh, and so to the extent that we can exclude ill workers and recognize when there um, are issues going on in the community, as well as um, look at potential reservoirs for persistence of the virus, like um, restrooms, for example, or uh, kids, uh, the play centers that they have in, in, in 
fast food restaurants. Um, I think those are really um, important areas to focus on relative to sanitation and hygiene and preventing transmission. One practice that we see in the industry a lot is reusable wiping cloths stored in the red bucket, wiping down tables. We've all seen it. Um, both of you have experience with this. How I used to manage this in restaurants, and Leanne, you've obviously done research about it. But what do you see as the major risk with this practice, and what are some alternatives you suggest? So, Hal? So, years ago, when I was leading Chick fil A's program, you know, I, I noticed that there were two big issues with it. One was compliance to it, you know, keeping the right sanitizer concentration, um, and also just making sure that they were using it to clean and sanitize. Most of the time they just take the rag up, not at Chick-fil-A, but everywhere, and they squeeze out the rag and they rub it around and they think that's cleaning and sanitation. Clean sanitation has to happen with a cleaner and then a sanitizer, <laughs> and that doesn't happen when you just use a towel out of the red bucket. But people still today will tell me, some, I see, you know, talk to people, they'll say, well, we're, we're sanitizing, everything's got sanitizer in it, but they don't clean anything. So they're just, when they use that rag in the bucket, they're, they're cleaning with, grease and oil and then they wring it out and they think they're sanitizing after at the same time so that's the big issue another issue was customer experience customers don't like to see the rag in the pocket or the bucket the old soil water they see you doing that and it's like they're not stupid they know you're just spreading germs around especially when they see you walk out of the bathroom with the towel in your pocket so you know it's a really big issue and i, I think at some point the fda needs to go back and revisit you know some of that um, that use. It is cheap. I've heard people say it's very cheap and inexpensive, but it's also very expensive when it's done wrong because it's going to lead to foodborne disease out outbreak. So, so we've tested many different sanitizers and disinfectants that are used um, pretty widely commercially. And quite frankly, um, in food service, the vast majority um, of companies use um, quaternary ammonium compounds. And we know that most of these products at the concentrations that are routinely used for sanitation and hygiene at retail and food service are not effective against human norovirus. Um, so, so not only are we using these products in, in a way that may um, promote cross-contamination, you have the added uh, impact of nothing's being inactivated, which is just going to make cross-contamination worse, right? So I think recognition that um, uh, that, that the products that we're currently using or that most people are using really are not inactivating norovirus is a really important, um, it's, it's a very important principle. And, um, and, and keep in mind that for a variety of reasons, many of these products do, are allowed to make label claims claiming they kill human norovirus, even though they don't necessarily do that. Um, we also have plenty of data that shows that cross-contamination absolutely does happen. And I did want to point out one, one um, um, uh, point that is um, related to what Hal said is that most products actually are impacted by soil load. So if you put a dirty rag in a dirty bucket with dirty sanitizer, even if it worked, it's going to be inactivated because you have filth. Y'all are two truly remarkable food safety experts and can't thank you enough for your time. Um, so I think with that, we're going to close from the Purell booth at the Food Safety Summit. So thank you all for joining us and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you.